What's up lads today I'm bringing you a highly requested and severely late settings and filters video for DayZ, which would help you get your game looking from gloomy and blurry to sharp and clean for PvP. Now I just want to say I 100% agree that doing this is probably not very sportsmanlike, but honestly I don't give a crap. So after these changes I'll be able to spot more players, get more FPS and hopefully you'll actually improve your PvP experience. I've split the video into two sections, part one being adjusting the default DayZ video settings to improve your overall FPS, reduce your overall grass and leaves which will help you see players more easily. Then in part two is we'll be covering using a third party filter software like NVIDIA GeForce Experience or Reshade. This will look to improve your colour, brightness and sharpness of the video so it makes it less fuzzy and will help players pop from a distance. But just before we jump into the settings, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, BenQ. They've actually sent over a super sick product, the Screen Bar Monitor Light, and it actually fits super well to add to the overall setups and settings to improve your PvP in DayZ. I know for a fact, based on the responses from my polls, at least 60% of you gremlins are staying up to ungodly hours, and this BenQ Screen Bar is a USB powered gaming light for your monitor and for your desk. It helps to reduce the strain on your eyes when the lights go out and after using it for a week or so now I can say the features are actually super useful. We have a couple main buttons on the actual screen bar which let you tweak the intensity of the light and the warmth um, but if you're like me you'll probably click this button over here which automatically senses the brightness in the room and then it matches it by adjusting the intensity and the warmth so that you don't have super white bright lights at 12 a.m. in the middle of the night. If you're interested in grubbing one of these game bars, the link is in the description. That's enough for Salesman Matty, let's move on to the settings video you are interested in. Right boys, if we jump into part one of this video, we'll be adjusting our default daisy settings to improve your overall FPS, make sure stuff renders in properly, but also to increase your chances of seeing players from a distance. So if you press escape, you go to options, you go to video settings, we come up with the default settings at the top. Now generally people will just check these quality settings up here from low, medium, extreme, high, whatever. As a PvP player, you actually don't want to be using these settings because they're actually specifically designed to be immersive, bring that survival experience. But if you're looking for PvP and you're looking to spot players and bring the best from yourself by improving your FPS then you want to be following this guide to hopefully do that increase your FPS and see more players now what I tend to do just to kick it off straight away is put everything on poor straight away this will be the perfect starting point and we can build it up from the ground up as you can see I actually play on full screen mode now the reason for this is that actually full screen gives you a little bit more FPS than playing in windowed. It also stops your game from bugging out and sometimes accidentally having your mouse fly across the screen onto a second monitor or another program. My resolution is actually super high because I play in quad HD. Now I know other monitors will not support this resolution and I'm only on this resolution because of my screen size. Um, but if I was on a different screen size, then I'd actually just use the default resolution here. Brightness, keep it the same. And for V-Sync, you actually want to disable this because unless you have a specific GeForce or G-Sync monitor, then um, it's not very useful having this on. It'll actually eat up a lot of FPS, eat up a lot of your GPU and CPU power. So if we actually go down, this is where it gets interesting. We actually want to go down to our complexity levels and this is our object detail. Now, weirdly enough, although we set our settings on poor, we want to change this settings for the object detail to extreme. Now straight away, this allows us to render in specific objects and textures at extreme terrain details from a distance. Now what this does, it actually lets you spot players further away. One, because it renders in windows, in houses from a distance, and two, because it actually makes the players more clear and it actually rounds off some of the leaves as you can see in the background when we change the density level. So we go poor, we go extreme. You can see when we flick between the two, things start to render in a bit more nicely. 
and this actually makes the colors pop a bit more so when the player is sitting in a bush they actually stand out a lot easier now for terrain detail we want to keep this at poor because when we put it on extreme you can see that actually it's a little bit you know you kind of don't want it i don't see much difference on it but you just want to keep it down to improve fps for the texture details you also want to keep this on poor to improve fps there's really not much difference in this section and then for shadow details you definitely want this on poor because if you put it on extreme well you'll actually start seeing a lot more shadows people hiding in bushes hiding in dark corners will be a lot harder to see and everything else in the rendering i keep it as the default low or poor settings that it came with because it basically helps your pc performance overall to give you that best fps moving forwards so that's actually part one take a screenshot of this go apply it straight away and then we'll move it on to the next section in part two where we'll be covering the filters and you'll be using programs such as geforce experience or reshade right lads there are two main ways to get filters when you're playing daisy and actually any game now you're separated for two reasons and that is you either have a nvidia graphics card or an amd graphics card now nvidia graphics cards should be using what's called nvidia geforce experience the link will be in the description and once you have that normally it comes pre-installed with your graphics card but if you don't have it make sure to download that and make sure to boot that up once it's up then we'll actually get into how you can add the filters but if you don't have a nvidia graphics card what you want to do is download an application called reshade now reshade is a free third-party software which basically allows you to change color the depth the sort of sharpness all that stuff you can actually customize it however you want it's used across a lot of games such as gta and a couple others so definitely use this if you're using a amd graphics card so in this video i'm going to cover the actual how to use the geforce experience because that's what i use but if you want to understand how to use reshade then i'll link one in the description below where a guy actually just runs through how to do it with gta so once you click download on the nvidia geforce experience website you will have an application on your pc now called nvidia geforce experience down here so make sure that is up and running and once it is up and running you actually want to then start to click alt plus c this will bring up the nvidia geforce experience overlay and in here you'll see on the left hand side there's a settings or an option called game filter and this is what's going to be really important because once you're in game filters this is where we're going to start tweaking the game to make it look a little bit better as you can see i can't open it right now but once you get into a game that supports game filters you'll actually be able to tweak the settings and see it applied straight away right lads what's going on we have now opened up daisy and we are using the settings earlier mentioned so if we go back to the settings video settings we have everything on full screen we've got the object detail extreme everything else on poor turned off and on low now it's time to actually add the filters to make our somewhat blurry gloomy game look a little bit more exciting and to do that once you have nvidia geforce experience installed you want to press alt and z once you're in game this will bring up what's called the geforce overlay and in here on the left hand side you can see something called filters this is what we're going to be using to add our filters you can see the styles one two three these are basically different presets that you can build on each one and it'll save there automatically i've already made my preset on number one so let's jump straight through my options on why i've chosen them so i've chosen four categories brightness and contrast color details and sharpen so for the brightness and contrast we've got exposure at zero percent because we don't want our game looking crazy ridiculously bright or crazy ridiculously dark zero percent we don't want to alter all of that hopefully i can get it back down to zero minus one will have to do contrast is at 15 percent so this is because we don't again similar to the before we don't want the colors either being too vibrant hard in the eyes or too sort of grayed out so 15 percent i found is a really good middle ground highlights i've kept it 100 main reason being if i have it on zero then the game looks really smoothed out and blurry to me if i have it 100 the items the grass the leaves pop out a little bit more shadows i've got a minus 30 percent because as a daisy player you don't want to 
You don't want to get snuck up on by someone sitting in the shadows, sitting in trees, sitting in bushes, and reducing the amount of shadows actually helps with that, albeit somewhat unsportsmanlike. Who cares in the end? So if you have that at minus 30%, that helps reduce some of the shadows. If you have it even more, then it kind of makes the game look a bit crappy, and I don't really like that. If you have it all the way up, then it actually makes it look ridiculously dark, and shadows are just over, over-tuned, and they take up the whole screen. So minus 30%, I've found is a super nice middle ground. Colour is the next one, so in this section I'm just adding a little bit of warmth to the to the video. I turned tint colour all the way down because I don't want it to be ridiculously different colours here. So I've just put that at 0% intensity at 20% because I only want to add a little bit of warmth. If you put it all the way up then you turn, your game turns into some 3D glasses. I just want to put it at 20% just to give the game a little bit of bump, a little bit of warmth to sort of liven the game up a bit. Temperature zero and vibrance I put 66. Any anything for vibrance between like 60 and 70 I found is good. If you turn it all the way down, you can see it's a grey scale. You turn it away all the way up, it's too bright and the games look like Fortnite. So you kind of 60, 67, 66, something like that. A super good middle ground. Next will be details. This is another really important section. I've turned sharpening at 0%, which is normally different to how a lot of people use their filters, but basically Having sharpening all the way up to me just makes the game look a bit too crappy and it actually brings out too much of the brightness that we set earlier. So if I turn that all the way down it's a lot easier on the eyes and I even play with safe eye mode so I hate having that glare on my screen. So clarity I've got 10%, same reason being if I turn it all the way up then it's a little bit harsh on the eyes, turn it all the way down it's a little bit too smooth and ridiculous so 10% is a really nice middle ground there to make the game look somewhat playable but also enjoy the benefits. Of playing with filters. I can't get about 10%, I'll just leave it there. HDR turning again, 100%. Basically, if you have it on 0%, it looks like the default game. Bringing it out to 100% brings out all the benefits of the filters. Now, if we go to sharpen, we got the sharpening on 100% intensity. This is because we want items like grass, leaves, guns, players, legs, animals, whatever. You want the sharpness of those things being as crisp as possible. So if I turn it all the way down, you can see how the sharpness of the grass and the leaves go really blurry. Turn it all the way up, everything starts to get separated. We can see the exact details. Film grain, we wanna ignore that crap because again, it just smooths your game out. You turn it all the way up, look how smooth the grass looks in the background. Turn it all the way down, it's a little bit more detailed. And that, ladies and gents, is the filters that you'd want to set, at least as a starting point, if you want to increase your PvP experiences, spot more players, and overall just have a more lively Daisy experience. Now, this is just a starting point. You can edit the filters however you like. This is what I prefer and what I think is the best settings for Daisy in spotting players. Make sure to subscribe, lads, and also keep an eye out for that Daisy movie I have coming out in the coming days.